Hey everybody, it's George Whittem, reporting for Whittem's World. This week it's in the raw, because I don't have time to go through and carefully slice and dice my videos and put a bunch of titles and all this stuff, so I'm just going to talk. Here it is, warts and all. You can see how many mistakes I usually make in a video right now. So this week's question came in from Tom Hand, and Tom's question is about updating to Windows 10. And he says, much has been made of the upgrade to Windows 10 being free and such a great deal that it is for users of Windows 7 and 8. But recently confirmed is the fact that you cannot turn off automatic updates. According to a write-up I read on Forbes, there is a way to delay the updates for no more than one month. Given that updates can break currently working studio setups, what are your thoughts on upgrading to Windows 10 with those unavoidable updates as a consideration? People with some older setups might find that some manufacturers are no longer writing new drivers for their older products, and that could, in my mind, permanently disable some equipment. Thought it might be an interesting topic on Widom's World. Well, you're right, Tom, because it's pretty timely. Um, by the time you've seen this video, uh, Windows 10 will have already been released because it was released on July 29th. And... Um, Here's what you need to know. And basically, I found a couple good resources online. One of them that I read recently, uh, the probably the strongest article I found, was a great one on Infoworld.com titled Windows 10 Fact Versus Fiction. I always like those kinds of articles because they clear up a ton of misconceptions. But the things you guys need to know about, and the number one thing I'll lead off right out of the gate, is don't upgrade yet. There's no reason for any of you to be running Windows 10 if you're using your computer for doing voiceover audio production, period. If you have a currently running system that's stable, reliable, running well, and you can count on it day to day to do your production work, do not upgrade to Windows 10, okay? Just like I always talk about upgrades to Mac Yosemite and all these Mac upgrades, it's the same deal with Windows. Except with Windows, they wait a lot longer to release new upgrades. And so when they do, there can be a tremendous amount of changes under the hood that occur that are, you know, really can break a lot of stuff. So do not upgrade to Windows 10 until you've gone through all of the software you use, all of the hardware you use, and you've made sure that every single one of those things has released drivers or version up updates or upgrades to be compatible with Windows 10. And that might cost you money. All those upgrades may not be free. So Windows 10 being free itself is nice, but the upgrades to drivers or hardware or, you know, you might have to buy a new piece of hardware or um, the upgrades to the software you're already running, that may not be free. Now, if you're running Windows 10 or Windows 7, I should say, Windows 7 or Windows 8 Home Edition, which is the majority of you are running. I mean, that's the version that comes with pretty much every out-of-the-box PC unless you pay extra for Pro. If you have a home edition, then Windows 10 will upgrade to home edition automatically. Um, if you're running Pro, it'll upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. I don't know all the differences bullet point by bullet point here, but here's the really, really important one that I read recently in relations to this update thing. On Windows 10 Professional, you can control when uh, these updates are going to be rolled out. In other words, you don't have to take the updates automatically every time they come and just disrupt your production workflow. With Pro, you can delay the updates to a time when you're ready. Just like here on uh, Mac, uh, you know, actually I'm running Mac uh, Mavericks. When there's an update, it says, hey, there's an update available. When would you like me to do it? And you can say later, you know, do it. Remind me tonight. Tell me later. You can delay all the updates. Well, with Windows 10 um, Pro, you can do that. With Windows 10 Basic, you can't, is my understanding. And it will just update whenever it wants to. So Windows 10 Basic, which I think is home, I think they're all the same. If, if you have that version, beware, because you could get updates that could break things, and that is not good. Why would you install Windows 10? If you're running Windows 8, and you're not happy with Windows 8, and you want to try something new, then maybe go to Windows 10. If the things that you hated about Windows 8 are the way the interface works, then go to Windows 10 because it's sort of the best of Windows 7 and 8 kind of combined in terms of going back to the old Windows 7 feeling interface, but having some of the elements of Windows 8. There's some uh, performance boost things that they did, nothing significant that would really make any difference to you guys. I mean, I was reading some stuff on another blog. Um, actually, this one I was reading was on PCAudioLabs.com. 
called How to Upgrade to Windows 10. And they said there was some article about some benchmarks that were that was linked in there saying that, you know, if you uh, can you can get lower latency if you go to Windows 10. Well, we're talking about the difference from a four millisecond latency to a three, four, yeah, four to three millisecond latency, which is a, actually, if you look at it by pure numbers, it is 25%. So that is a big deal. But for us in the world of audio that are doing voiceover recording, it makes absolutely no difference to us. You do not care. So whatever little tiny performance increases that occur with Windows 10, you're just not going to notice them. Um, I wouldn't get Windows 10 until you buy a new computer that comes with Windows 10, personally. But if you have two computers and you've got one dedicated to production and you have another computer that you use for office work and just sort of personal use, I'd feel a lot more safe about upgrading that machine to Windows 10 first and getting used to it, getting around Um, getting used to the new interface and any of its quirks. And then when you're absolutely sure, and then when you've backed up, you are backing up, right? Don't tell me you're not backing up. When you've backed up your computer, then upgrade to Windows 10. Um, Definitely check out that article in InfoWorld. Again, I'll have a link to it at the bottom of the screen. Uh, Windows 10 Fact versus Fiction. Those are it's a good article. It's it's comprehensive. It talks about a lot of things on there. One other thing I do understand though is it is going to be free and it's supposedly going to be free for the lifetime of the support of the software, which is supposed to be like 10 years. So they're taking a page out of the uh, Apple playbook there. Interesting, right? What does that behoove Microsoft? I don't know. I think it's because their their new model of selling software as a service, and they, they really want everybody to be on the same page in terms of using the latest things so that all the developers can have the latest tools and better software can be made and more compelling and making you want to buy it. I, I guess it, it's an interesting model. Um, but it, anyway, Windows 10, definitely not ready. If you want to install it on a second computer, an old computer that can run Windows 10, absolutely Go for it. Have a blast. Report back to me and let me know your experiences. But do not install Windows 10 on your production computer, the one that you make a living using every day that if it went down, it would be a major, major hassle. Just don't do it. Thanks a lot, Tom, for sending in your question about Windows 10. It looks like it's going to be interesting, but just like every new OS, I'm really pretty much unimpressed. All I care about is what tools can I use to get my job done? And frankly, um, the tools that I like to use, most of them are running on a Mac. So I'm going to be sticking with Mac for the foreseeable future. If you have any more questions for the show, send them into widomsworld at edgestudio.com. Then I can answer them. If you have any tech support issues, that would be vostudiotech.com. And we'll soon have all that information finally ported over to edgestudio.com. But we're not quite there yet. We're we're still making the transition from my VO Studio Tech website world to the edgestudio.com world, which is having an entirely from the ground up new website built as we speak. And it is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Really amazing interface that they've developed. Um, so that's all happening. But if you have any questions, then, uh, you know, still, if you have tech issue, VO Studio Tech, VO Studio Tech. I need to slow down and speak clearly like a voiceover actor. VOStudiotech.com is the place to go for that stuff. And uh, you can always call us too. There is a phone number, 212-868-EDGE-3343. This has been George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sorry about the quick, raw version of the show, but I hope it's still f- you found it uh, informative. And I'll see you guys next week, hopefully with a review of a new microphone. See you later. See you later.